let us start a next problem based on free fall condition the problem is now an iron ball of mass 3 kg is released from a height of 125 meter and falls freely on the ground assuming that the value of g 10 meter per second square so here mass of the ball is 3 kg it is falling freely from a height 125 meter and acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square what are the parameter which we have to calculate calculate time taken by the ball to reach the ground now here it is only a time of descent that is the time taken by the ball from that maximum height position to the ground that is one side journey that is one side in earlier one example we have studied the ball thrown from the ground reaches to the maximum height and again reach to the ground in that case the ball journey was to and fro here the ball journey is only one side velocity of ball on reaching the ground what is the final velocity of the ball on reaching the ground it is a free fall condition means initial velocity is zero here we have to calculate the final velocity height of ball at half the time it takes the reach the ground so what is the height of the ball that half the time so whatever the total time taken by the ball to reach the ground of it we have to take the half value that is the half time and for that half time whatever the height of the ball so that we have to calculate so in this solving we have to at first calculate the distance travel by the ball because here the motion of the ball is from maximum height toward the ground so we have to calculate the distance travel by the ball from maximum height towards the ground in half time and that position is measured always from the ground because height is always measured from the ground not from the that highest point so see the solution of this problem here mass of the ball is 3 kg given here distance travel by the ball is 125 meter initial velocity of ball is zero and here acceleration is equal to acceleration due to gravity that is 10 meter per second square here motion of the ball is downward in direction hence the g is taken as positive it is a case of acceleration and not the retardation what we have to find in this problem that is the time taken by the ball to reach the ground that is t second what is the final velocity of the ball on reaching the ground and third what is the height of the ball this distance we have to calculate from the ground to the that one particular point where the ball will reach in t by 2 time at half time now for getting the first parameter that is time taken by the ball to reach the ground here as the distance travel by the ball is given so we have to use the newton's second equation of motion here newton's second equation of motion that is s equal to ut plus half at square here as it is a case of free fall initial velocity is zero into t plus half here acceleration is acceleration due to gravity that is 10 into we have to calculate the time taken by the ball to reach the ground that is t square here distance travel by the ball is 125 meter so 125 equal to this side calculation will be 10 by 2 is 5 t square Hence, t square become 125 divided by 5. Solving this 125 by 5, it will be 25. So, t square equal to 25. It means t equal to 5 second. Hence, the ball takes 5 second to reach the ground. Now, we want to calculate the final velocity. Now, we calculated the total time taken by the ball to reach the ground. So, here, time velocity form can be used. to calculate the final velocity and that is the newton's first equation of motion so what is newton's first equation of motion v equal to u plus at v equal to u is 0 here acceleration is 10 and time is 5 second so final velocity will be 50 meter per second the velocity of ball on reaching the ground is 50 meter per second hence we have calculated the two parameters in this problem 
Now let us see the third parameter. Now in half time, how much distance that the ball will travel? So in half time means total time was 5. So half time will be 5 by 2. So 5 by 2 is nothing but the 2.5 second. In this 2.5 second, how much distance travel by the ball? Because here the motion of the ball begins from the highest point. It is a pre-fall condition toward the ground. So distance travel by the ball in the half time means this 2.5 second is again calculated by distance time relation and the distance time relation is Newton's second equation of motion. That is S equal to ut plus half at square. Here we want to calculate the distance travel in half the time. So here in beginning case it is a free fall so initial velocity is 0 so this first term becomes 0. Now remaining calculation will be half here acceleration is g that is 10 and in that half time half time means 2.5 whole square. So solving this 10 by 2 is 5. 5 into square of this is 6.25. So 6.25 into 5. So you will get the distance traveled by the ball from that highest point in that half time will be 31.25 meter. Hence the height of the ball at half time will be this 125 minus this distance travel. That will be 93.75 meter. Have you understood this? What is the height of the ball? Height of the ball means height is always measured from the ground. This is the distance traveled by the ball from the top. So that position we are considering from the ground. So from ground the total height of the ball at the beginning of the motion was 125 meter. Minus in t by 2 time the distance traveled by the ball is 31.25. Hence, the subtraction of this will give the height of that ball from the ground that is 31 point, sorry, 93.75 meter. Have you understood this? 125 minus 31.25 that will give 93.75 meter. Have you understood this? So, see the next topic of the gravitation. Now, next term to, in study of the gravitation as per your syllabus is gravitational potential energy. It is one sort of energy. So what is gravitational potential energy? You are familiar with the word potential energy. Here is one new concept about the potential energy that is gravitational potential energy. You have studied in the earlier class potential energy is mgh. With the same concept of that potential energy what happens with the equation of mgh you know as height increases potential energy increases. As height increases, potential energy increases. Now, we are um, applying the similar concept while studying the gravitational potential energy. But what happens as the height increases, g decreases. If we consider very large height, infinite height, then height will be infinity. When height will be infinity, so at infinite height, that acceleration due to gravity is zero. So, in your potential energy formula that mgh height is very large as height is very large as per your previous standard concept you may think the potential energy is very large but this is not the answer at the same time that very large height g becomes zero because acceleration due to gravity goes on decreasing as the distance increases as the height increases and at very large height at infinite height infinite means very large height the g becomes zero as the g becomes zero the potential energy is zero it means the maximum value of gravitational potential energy is not infinite is not very large it is zero so what is the one prediction about this gravitational potential energy when height is very large the potential energy or gravitational potential energy seems to be zero then as the height decreases we know that potential energy decreases this concept is also true so as maximum height the potential energy is zero then at lower height the potential energy must be less than the zero what is mean by less than zero less than zero means negative hence the gravitational potential energy is always negative so gravitational potential energy is negative why the gravitational potential energy is negative because at very large height that is infinite height height is very large but at the same time so g become zero 
potential energy formula is mgh here height is very large but in this equation mgh g becomes zero when height is infinity as g becomes zero then potential energy is zero hence at maximum height whenever the height is maximum the potential energy is not maximum it is zero and at lower height the potential energy will be less than that maximum value so the value less than the zero means negative hence gravitational potential energy at all our considerable height is negative so what is the definition of gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in an object because of its position in a gravitational field so this is the definition of gravitational potential energy you know potential energy is a stored energy so in this definition the word is energy stored in an object by the position in a gravitational field this is the definition of gravitational potential energy once again repeat the definition what is gravitational potential energy the energy stored in an object because of its position in a gravitational field what is the formula of this potential energy its formula is this formula you have to remember like in the beginning of this chapter you have one new formula that is centripetal force which was mv square by r similarly student you have to remember this formula of potential energy gravitational potential energy is minus side it is g capital m small m upon r plus h what is the difference between capital m and small m capital m is a mass of larger body and small m is a mass of smaller body so like this is a difference for example in earth and the moon case capital m is a mass of earth and small m is a mass of moon in sun and earth case capital m is a mass of sun and small m is the mass of earth so this is a formula of gravitational potential energy at height h again i will repeat gravitational potential energy at height h is minus g capital m small m upon r plus h now if the body is on the surface as per your previous standard concept you are taking on the surface potential energy zero but here on the surface potential energy is not zero on the surface as height will be zero the gravitational potential energy on the earth surface is taken as minus g capital m small m upon r this is the gravitational potential energy on the surface so this is the concept of gravitational potential energy for this you have to remember this formula and this definition now the next heading after this gravitational potential energy is the escape velocity so what is escape velocity it is the minimum speed needed to an object to escape from gravitational force of earth for an object of mass m so this is the meaning of escape velocity so escape velocity is the minimum velocity minimum speed needed for an object to escape from the gravitational force of the earth so this is the definition of escape velocity for example we have to suppose shift a body from earth to moon's gravitational field like in case of chandrayaan chandrayaan or another example is you know some mars missions are going on so in that case at first we have to remove the body from earth's gravitational field and shift in the mars gravitational field in that moon mission we have to remove the body from the earth's gravitational field and shift it in the moon's gravitational field so how much velocity is required to remove the body from the earth's gravitational field so that velocity is called as escape velocity so here the definition is escape velocity is the minimum speed needed by an object to escape from the gravitational force of the earth it's called escape velocity so we will continue the next part in the next session